Ben, can you hear me? I think we need microphones first. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear us? <laughs> What's up, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you can see us, huh? Okay, cool. I, I can see you, yes. You What's guys are on? sharing that mic, I guess. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Anna. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. I'm. Uh... I'm Jim Schaefer. I'm the investigations editor of the Free Press and also a reporter. Uh, how about a round of applause again for the uh, actor and producer and director of the film. Ben, you look rich. <laughs> he looks rich? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> we'll ask him about I, that. I have the tanning bed now, yeah. So, uh, obviously, you know who these folks are. Jonathan and Anastasia, his wife. And uh, Ben Berman is the director of the film. Thanks for joining us by Skype. I'm glad to see that this thing is actually working. Uh, yes, thanks. Thank you for having uh, the film, and thanks for having me Skype in. Absolutely. We have a, uh, a very energetic crowd here, and we'll see if they have any questions uh, in a few minutes after I get done asking the mandatory ones. Which, of course, right off the bat, Jonathan, we have to know how you're doing. How's your health? Uh, my health is fine, actually. I feel pretty good. Uh, there's complications here and there, but it's like putting your finger in a dam. There's a million holes in it, you know. You fill one hole and another one sprouts. So, yeah, I'm doing my part, and I'm doing what I should be doing. Were you uh, in the hospital in January? Yeah, I wrote it on Facebook. Facebook for a while, yeah. Uh, I'm in and out. You know? Like I said, stuff comes up, and then, and then you know, they want to take this foot. And I said no, and, and then uh, good thing because it's healing now, and it's, I should be able to have this off. It's been two years since I've been able to really walk anywhere. Wow. Yeah. And believe it or not, folks, uh, you have shows coming up locally. Yeah, I'm at Mark Ridley's County Castle next month in Royal Oak. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, that's a, it's, I've worked twice this year. I've done two shows this year, uh, and uh, that's going to be one of them. That's going to be five of them. We're doing five shows, actually, so it's going to be uh, something. Come see the early show is my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> is it May 8th, 9th, and 10th, I believe? It's, it's, uh, does that sound right? Okay, look it up on the internet. Uh, if you can Google it much better than my memory will uh, will, will help you. Um, ben, I've got to ask you, why yeah. stick with this thing, man? You could have said the hell with this, and you probably did it about five times, right? I mean, why stick, why stick with it? Because because we're here. We're, we got Jonathan and Anna in Detroit. We got a movie done. You know, it's uh, you, I, you always kind of hope for this to happen, and, and it all did, so thank God we kept we kept going with it. Because to have given up, then, then what do we have? We got we got two or three <laughs> documentaries on Jonathan, not you, more. You, there's hours and hours of footage that you didn't even use. I mean, for the first year and a half you followed me, none of that's in the film. No, there's tons, no, there's, there's tons of... Yeah, there's tons of, you can make another one. Well, there, there's tons of footage that's not the film, but there's tons, even the first day that I met you, Jonathan, the first day I came to Vegas to meet you and Anna, we started filming, and that's like when you're in the bedroom choking on the pills and all, like, I think some of that, like, the first time we hear from Anna in the movie, that was all literally the first day I even met you and we were filming, so, like, tons of that's in the movie. But yeah. I think to answer the question, why keep up with it, is, like, I think once I realized how much of a kind of a in a good way that a train wreck it was, I was like, oh, okay, you gotta use, gotta use it, not not yeah. run from it, you know. You well, realized it was a train wreck pretty much right from the start, didn't you? <laughs> no, no, it became much worse later <laughs> on. Well, I want to know: that, were there any moments that you did not put in the film where you just lost it, or your conversations were much more profane or angry than than what we saw? Good question. I, I think I think what's in the movie is the most um, like it was documented. It's the most you know honest and darkest it it, it was. I think uh, so. Yeah, I don't I don't think we were, we didn't really hide much. We didn't really keep much from from the audience, which I I'm, I'm happy with. 
you know, in regards to me, and I'm, I'm happy that Jonathan and Anna were, um, were comfortable with what we used uh, of them as well. So I think it's a very honest movie. I am interested in what they think. Uh, what's your reaction to the film, guys? There were some moments in there that were pretty unflattering. But there's also a good one. I like the other documentary so much better. Uh, <laughs> no, we loved it. We were very, we were, we were frightened about what was, we didn't know what that was, what, what his angle was going to be. Uh, so, yeah, we were scared about it. We were just focused too much on the drug use. Is he going to, you know, show stuff? Yeah, so we, we didn't know. We wanted, he could have gone the evil route very easily. But he did. So after we watched it, we were blown away by it. We actually thought, oh, this is a, he did a great job playing on Monday. That's ballsy. You know, we talked to you know, Simon. That was, that was a ballsy move. Yeah. You got to go for it, you know? Uh, and you actually, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear Anna's reaction. I honestly feel like Ben knows Jonathan very, very well in this family. I would very much agree with me. But what did Jonathan want? What ending would make him the happiest? To be right. Am I right? So I feel like Ben really nailed it right there. Yeah. There's so many right. people who want to be wrong. Everybody wants to be right. So Ben, how did you get the interview with Simon? Uh, and did you know how it was going to go before you turned your cameras on? No idea what the outcome was going to be. I just knew I, I had to put myself in front of him. And how did we get that interview? Was, was, the, was your question? Yes. Yeah. Um, basically, I met a, uh, someone in the documentary world, a, a great guy named Eli Dupree, who edited a great documentary called Wiener, uh, about Anthony Wiener, which is an awesome doc. Um, anyway, he was the one who introduced me to Simon, but then when I emailed Simon, I didn't, I told the complete truth, but how do I phrase it? I, I, I basically said I was making a documentary about doc making documentaries and kind of kept out all the specifics so I was able to tell him the specifics in person. Because uh, I think if I would have told him the specifics, he would have been like, this is too confusing, which it is, and like, no thanks for you know an interview. But I asked him if he would be interviewed for a documentary I was doing about making documentaries, which is true, you know, but it's not the whole truth. So we sprung a lot of stuff on in, in the room in London, which I am proud of. Oh, uh, it's great. He lied his way in. Yeah, he lied his way in. <laughs> oh, his reactions were precious. I mean, they really made uh, the, the, the surprise that you were able to give John and that the assisted living home uh, resonate. And I wondered about that. Were you looking for an ending that sort of redeemed yourself uh, after the very uncomfortable confrontation and the, what turned out to be a false accusation against him? Uh, absolutely, yeah. And then to, to, I think, you asked an earlier question about uh, we could have gone an evil way, or what Jonathan mentioned. The you know we could have gone then could have gone an evil way in in the movie within like during the third act when I am questioning the validity of Jonathan's illness. That is evil, but then I'm I'm proven to be evil <laughs> or to be unethical or whatever you want to call it. But that's the most honest. A documentary that wouldn't have included that if it really happened is a false documentary. So I agree. Uh, that's the question most people have. I'm glad that you did address that because it's in the back of people's minds anyway, and uh, it needed to be addressed. And it, as so uncomfortable as it was for you to do that to me, it actually saves me a lot of time explaining it. <laughs> if anyone questions it now, you just say, "Watch the movie. It's going to be on Hulu in the summer. Watch, watch it." And, you don't have to answer any more questions. Yeah. Um, wait, what was the question? I forget even the question. <laughs> That's all right. I want to, I think the best journalism, and, and you certainly use the journalism techniques in the documentary, shows all the warts, shows the whole story front, back, up and down, good and bad. And you really uh, show a lot of honesty. Well, he wants me to ask you if you actually have a crystal meth habit. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> kind of hooked now. First one was free, man. <laughs> I got to text you. Text you after the screen. <laughs> but, you know, um, one of the moments that I thought was very dramatic, very emotional, was when the comedian is dying on stage. And 
and uh, I think that affected How you. Um, uh, you mentioned it in the film. I, I just wonder, uh, there's a very poignant moment with your mother as well, talking about how this is what he wants to do, that's what I want him to do. Um, and she's proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about this, this desire to keep working um, in your time maybe limited. You know, it's, they say when you stop working, you die. You know, and that's true. We, everybody, it might happen to my father, he stopped working and then he was dead three weeks later, you know. I think you just gotta keep going and that's one of the things that, you know, it's not that I miss being in front of people and doing the show, I do it, but not, I do it because I think it's gonna keep me alive, you know. I think it'll keep me, keep me going. And if I do that, better, like I said, it's better dying on stage than it is at home in bed or in the hospital. You know, I'd rather have, have, have it go that way. Anna, you wanna give us your thoughts? She wants, she wants it to happen now. Uh, I don't think booking five shows over three nights is a smart idea. I think going back to work one night here and there is a great idea. I think pushing himself isn't. I think that the gig coming up is not a good idea. But um, who wants that new car? It's, it's not even about the money. No, it's it's fine. Um, I just—he's got a lot of fans. He's got a lot of places he can perform in Vegas and Brooklyn if he, or LA if he really wants to. He doesn't need to go on the road, I'd really rather he stop. Well, so, one, one day in one year, you know, that's not, that's not too bad. Five days in a year. Yeah, but one club in a whole year, I used to do it every weekend, you know. Yeah, how much should have been performing? I mean, how many shows? Uh, that's two shows. Uh, this will be the second. Uh, we did one show. We did yeah, we did uh, the Foxwood Casino, and then we're doing Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, and that's it for the year, so. Anna, you play a big role professionally with Jonathan, and personally, obviously, um, you're his wife, you're his stage manager, tour manager, ish. 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 What, what challenges um, haven't we heard about dealing with this guy? Oh, well, I can't get into too many details. <laughs> um, I mean, he's a comedian. He's got a very boisterous personality. He's very loving. He's also, um, you know, he's very, he, he's, does everything passionately, whether it be um, you know comedy or or relationships. Everything's very passionate, so that's who he is, and that could be ups, downs. But we've been together almost nine years, and things get since our first date. Yes, we moved in with him, and things have gotten better every year. So that's a sign, right? So you just sort of keep rolling with the punches, and things, the punches get less and less, and the happiest stuff gets more and more. And He's still alive, and every time we think we're going to lose him, he gets super healthy again. And he's just lost 30 pounds from getting a blood infection, got rid of the infection, foot's almost completely closed up. I think we might go to the beach in a couple of weeks, and it's been here. <laughs> so I'm really, you know, things get better and better. There's a pretty poignant moment in the film where you're talking about tolerating his drug use. Um, <laughs> <laughs> talk about that. Why? Is it just accepting him for who he is, or is there something deeper? Um, yeah, it has a lot to do with accepting him for who he is. Also, having no control in who he is, but also admiring who he is. Because, so, you know, if he says that he's who he is because of the things that he's done, it's hard to crap on him for that, you know? I was just going to say, nobody's met me a day in their life where I haven't been, uh, since I was 16 years old. Um, my motto is drugs are not the answer, drugs is the question. The answer is yes. So uh, I pretty much lived like that since I was 16, and uh, I, I do attribute that, what I'm doing, my success of it to drugs, because I know when I stop doing them completely, I sit there in front of the television set, and I, I, I don't do anything productive or creative. I lose all my interests in things that are creative that I, I love, and uh, it changes me completely. You know, and I don't like the way that it, it I, I like to be better on him than off him. So, I mean, it doesn't work for everyone, but, uh, if there are any kids in this Yeah, if there are any kids. Um, one other thing, too, is when he was in the hospital recently, he was clean for eight days. Didn't want to leave the hospital, enjoyed his hospital room. It was really, really awesome. I, I didn't notice any difference in his personality. The problem is, when he gets back home, 
There was no difference in his life. He has to heal his foot. It was really bad. He had a really nasty hole in it. So he just followed the old patterns, and I don't know how to break him out of that. And um, you know, all I do is I'm not around him. When he does that stuff, I'm gone. Like the minute that guy comes up, and out of the room. That's not the reason why I do it. <laughs> I don't think you realize how lucky you are. <laughs> uh, so let's bring it home real quick for a second. You're from Detroit. We're in Detroit. Tell us about Detroit. From Fraser. From Fraser. Yeah. I tell people all that. When people say, you're from Detroit, they say, it's a nice town if you're a bullet. That's the old Detroit. Yeah, I'm from Fraser, but. Uh, you haven't heard about the, uh, the new Detroit? I have heard about the new Detroit. <laughs> And your family's here? Uh, they love Detroit. My sister, my sister Gail there, she's a huge fan of Detroit. And uh, her and her husband, they're always down there. They spend a lot of time down here. And uh, I have friends that live down here as well. Uh, Detroit is a very cool place. Where'd you go to high school? Fraser High. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you left Detroit at what age? I was 18 when I left. I went to Hayes High in San Francisco and uh, started street performing up there and became uh, Pretty big street performer, then I started doing clubs and then I progressed from there. But yeah, this is where I'm from. And I, I love, I mean, Fraser is the best place in the world to be raised. I loved it. There's lakes every, everywhere you can look, and it's just this beautiful place. My mom lives in Woodland Hills now, but she uh, slumming it. In the of this. <laughs> Step down from Fraser. Right? Yeah. Any questions in the audience? Anybody want to shout out anything? We have about five minutes. Yeah, that's my hobby. I, I, I'm the, probably one of the best pranksters. And you ask any comic, they'll tell you that I'm, I'm the guy to go to for uh, pranks. Yeah. Examples? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have millions of examples. Um, I can list some that he hit me with on our first date. Um, he has a remote control water balloon detonator over the entrance to the house. The minute you enter, the thing explodes right over your head and completely soaks you. He has pranks all throughout our house, including um, a spider that will drop down from your face while you're looking at another spider and jump out scares cats that come through doors. That's just in our home. I have a doll on the wall uh, in a glass case, and then his dress is all ripped and bloody. It's a child's doll. And people go and they look at this doll real close up, and the thing comes alive in the, in the case and starts scratching around and scaring the shit out of people. Uh, it's just me on the other side of it with a stick plunging it out, you know. But uh, yeah, I just love it. I love scaring people as well. We, we grew up scaring people. If somebody said, we're going to the bathroom, you would run to the bathroom and hide behind a door. That's just normal, you know. <laughs> our, our family was weird that way. We, we liked to scare each other and uh, have water balloon fights in the house. And we, we had a good upbringing. But uh, yeah, I've got friends on, on airplanes to do gigs that were non-existent. You know, that's, that's how far off I was. I saw another hand. Yes, in the middle. Yeah, kind of a two-part question from Ben. What do you think the next part? Ben, can you hear this? Can you hear the new question? I'll repeat it to you. Go ahead. What is the next project and does it have a celebrity with failing health? <laughs> <laughs> the question for Ben is what's your next project and does it include a celebrity with failing health? <laughs> do you got one? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking. Uh, uh, well, yes, I'm, I'm um, definitely playing around with a couple different projects, some nonfiction documentary, some fiction films. Um, there is one that I'm researching pretty heavy about, it's going to sound weird, but about holograms. Like hologram, like basically like Tupac, Michael Jackson holograms, like those types of things. There's companies that produce and tour like deceased musician holograms. And there's like agents in Hollywood that like represent like Amy Winehouse hologram. It's a very interesting, weird world. It's like technology meets illusion meets mortality. But he's about death. death. Yes, yeah, it's about death. Still, Michael Jackson dead, Tupac dead. Yeah, no, there's no question that there's some similar themes. Why don't you get a shovel and go grave route it? Do a documentary about that. It's more about mortality. 
<laughs> Which is death, I don't know. Yeah, and then I'm playing around with the project like uh, for, with, with that in mind. Jonathan, I do have to ask you why you did what you did to poor Ben. I mean, I know it is your story. It's your life. You have every right to well, see it being told in the way that you want. But yeah, what was it about Ben that you didn't ben, think he could ben, get this done? Ben was doing his documentary, and then this other crew came up to me. And they weren't just the crew. It was the story that they did was about, about me and a, a boy from Australia who I met when he was a little kid and brought him, brought him up and, and, and used him as a uh, road manager. And, and he became a really great comic. That's kind of what the documentary is about. Uh, that's, it has a lot of heart. It's not the dark side of me. It shows, you know, the career going up. And, and I wanted that, the dark side. I knew the Ben was going to copy for sure. But, but the, the documentary, the second documentary, was produced by someone from Redbox. I mean, they didn't mention Lightbox, but it, there was a girl named Sarah who was a producer from Lightbox that was involved with the first documentary. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't a lie. I mean, that's what we were told. That, that was truth, but um, um, I, I hated to do that to Ben, but I, but I had to do it because it was a whole different story that Ben was telling, you know? You hated it and you loved it, which I don't blame you for. It's not, it's, I get, uh, you like rubbing it in my face. I did like rubbing it in your face, yeah, right. because something about, yeah, you, over and over something, again. something about you just initiates that. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it was fun. I've heard that before. Yeah, we had a playful relationship back like that, though. I would teach you about that. And so so ben, ben did end up being number two. Uh, <laughs> but as I understand it, and you, you both can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Ben's documentary is the one that's doing very, very yeah, well. Yeah, the other ones won some awards at the film festivals, but Ben, ben got it for the Sundance it is, and It's a great documentary. I mean, he deserves everything he gets, you know. And then he sells it to Hulu. So, I mean, he's, everything went the way he wanted to go. He knew what he was doing. Even though he didn't know what he was doing. I had no idea. At the end, it all, it all came together. He yeah. grew really, really, really quiet. Yeah. He came in like that quiet guy you would expect to be able to pull off a power home movie like this, but he didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on besides that, that dumb face. Yeah, yeah. that dumb face. <laughs> any closing thoughts from any of you? Anything you want to say to each other or to the audience here? Well, just Ben, thank you very much. I've watched this movie night like 17 times now. I went to see it. And uh, I can still sit through it, so thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, no, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Anna, for everything. I'll see you guys in Vegas. We're doing the Vegas uh, Film Festival soon. Yeah. We'll see you guys there. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching, and, and thanks. Uh, that's it. <laughs> oh, man, guess who was asking about you yesterday? I, I know the answer is nobody. No one, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> the first time, well, the first time you did that, I was like, oh, who? And still asking if he blew bubbles when he was a kid. Um, all right, so Jonathan, uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Anna, Ben. Thanks for joining us today. I, I do want to mention again that Jonathan has these five shows coming up next month. That Mark Ridley's comedy cast in Coelho. Um, we're all a little worried because he, uh, his manager apparently has booked two shows in one day, two days in a row, right? So, uh, and they're like an hour apart. So I wish you all the luck. Uh, the best I don't like. Uh, people want to see you perform. And I think they want to see that for a long, long time. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out.